Hello everyone. Today we are going to look at how to create a ball bounce. Okay. So we'll create this ball bounce and we will also look at how to um, work on the principle of animation timing and the other principle of animation which is squish and stretch. All right. So let us get started. Right. So we'll create a sphere and to make things a little fast I will use 18 segments in the modify panel and the modify panel reduce the segments to 18. The front view we will move the wall up and if you want to follow the dimensions that I'm using I'm going to use 50 and it says centimeters so if you go to customize unit setup you can make it metric and centimeters all right and i have moved the ball up 300 all right it's not really necessary what the numbers are as long as the ball is going to fall from high up down onto the ground all right so turn the auto key on and we're going to animate in tens. So every 10 frames, the ball is going to hit the ground and the ground is going to be this dark line here. So the ball hits the ground and you can see that there are two red dots here. I went to frame number 10 and move the ball down. So you got two keyframes. Keyframe number one is at zero and the other one is at 10. If you go here to the right on the motion panel, you can turn on the motion path. And now you can see the path the ball is following for that animation. All right. Now there's one more principle of animation which is slow in and slow out. And this ball by default is going to do that. On top the dots are closer and as it gets away the dots become big. That means the distance traveled by the ball is more. And then before it comes to stop the ball slows down all right so we got our first bounce at frame number 20 we'll bounce the ball up and it's not going to go all the way up it will go bounce a little less all right at frame number 30 what i can do is i can select this key and shift copy it okay so the ball will hit the ground again so the same uh, Whatever um, values were at 10 are copied at number 30. We'll go to frame number 40 and this time the ball will lose its energy a lot more and bounce a little. And then at 50 I can again copy. So how I'm copying is shift key and drag the keyframe. Okay, then I'll go to 60 and this time there will be a slight bounds and at 70 again I will copy okay now we can deselect the ball make it default shaded and now we can play the animation okay you can see now that the ball looks like it's floating in air it doesn't look like it's bouncing all right because of the slow in and slow out so we're going to change that select the ball turn the auto key off this time and we'll go to graph editor curve editor all right and then you will see the path the ball is following so how to read these curves is when the curve is straight or straightish then the animation is slow when the curve is steep that means the animation is fast so you can see it's slow fast slow fast slow so what we want to do is the ball is slow in air and then as it comes down it's fast 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 and then it hits the ground all right all of a sudden so that has to be done using this set tangent so we change that so now the ball is coming slow and then speed picks up the speed and boom it bounces back off so we have to do that at all the frames 
okay we'll close this window and now we will play the animation so you can rewind the animation play the animation and now the ball looks like it's bouncing okay select the ball now what we will do is now it has only captured the keys for uh, the movement of the ball the other keys that can be created is for the rotation and scale now we're going to squish and stretch so we're going to use the scale tool so some new keys will be created so to make things easier what we will do is we'll auto key it and just click on the set key and this will add all the keys so you can see it has become red green and blue and this is only red in the keyframe okay so what i'll do is i have to go to frame number 10 so i'll turn this button on which is key mode toggle so now i can jump from keyframe to keyframe if this is off then i jump from frame to frame okay so i'll go to frame number i'll toggle to frame number 10 add a key go to 20 add a key go to 30 add a key and repeat it for all the keys okay so all the keys now have if you go to graph editor curve editor now we have exposition rotation and we have scale key as well okay so now what we need is at frame number 10 the ball is going to get squished so here in the scale tool we are going to click on it and use the last option all right what it is going to do is when it squishes it is also going to it's going to keep the volume of the wall so it's going to you know squish and stretch if you use the normal scale tool the ball loses its volume okay so it can become bigger than its size or smaller than its size but this option will always do things proportionate okay so we're going to use that so now we will again go back to our front view and we're going to squish it and we're going to pay attention to these values here so we're going to squish it and we'll squish it a little more than what a normal ball would squish because there's another principle of animation it's called exaggeration so we're going to exaggerate it a little bit and because it has been squished it will have to be moved so now because we created the key at zero now we are animating the scale uh, so the ball is going to squish 20 now at 30 again it will be squished but let us look at 10 we used the squish value of squish value of 69 okay so we'll go to now 30 and then we'll squish it and it's going to be you can see it's 79 okay so 78 something and then again 50 we will squish it very little okay and then it will come to stop so now I'll play this animation okay now the ball is not stretching only squishing so what we'll do is at frame number nine just one frame before it hits the ground it's going to stretch so we'll now squish it stretch it and then the value is around 60 okay and we'll move it to the ground okay and then we'll also add a key so it squishes and then at 20 again it regains its volume we'll do same thing at 29 let's scale it now 9 was 84 so here it should be less than 84 
it's 83. So I'll make it 90. Then add a key. 40, and then at 50, it will be even less. So something like 96. 70 will not do anything. So I'll play the animation again. Okay, and now you get the ball bouncing. Okay, so if you want, you can go back and then maybe this seems a little bit too much, so you can reduce it. But that should be good enough. Right? So you get a ball bounce animation. And then I had a background created. So what I did was I created a plane. A big one like this. Converted the plane to editable poly. Selected these two vertices. And then these two vertices, I'll move them up. This one further move up like this. Okay. If you want, you can move all these three long. Then in the modify panel, we will use norm subdivision and iterations will be two is good enough. Then if you want, you can even scale this longer. So that creates a nice background. We will use a gray color for that. The ball can be nice and red. Okay, we go to perspective and use show save frame. So it's going to sh uh, it's going to show what is going to get rendered. And we are going to use 720 by 480. So if you go to the render settings here, We will use HDTV and 1280 by 720. So now we need to zoom in. Now you can select the ball, go to motion panel, trajectories, and you can see that this is the starting position, this is the end position. So then you can use your zoom tool to zoom in or out and scale this out so now you can put the G key to hide the grid and then when you play this animation ball is bouncing okay that's about it